the article I'm writing about and why I asked you guys for interviews um, about uh, reaction videos, specifically in the hip hop community, and it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like been a recent, maybe like the past two, two, three years, been a kind of big, especially like the online hip hop community, and you guys are kind of one of those channels that have been consistently putting out uh, putting out content with with like a dedicated fan base. So can you guys just uh, kind of give like a little intro bio to who you guys are and how you guys got into making reaction videos? Um, look, Jung Jungle Beats is like, we, we consider ourselves more than like a review channel. Right, right, right. A yeah, reaction yeah. channel, right? Yeah, yeah. We come from radio, uh, which a lot, not a lot of other channels do. Mm -hmm. Actually, it, many people who know the needle job, Anthony Santano, he actually comes from the radio as well. Okay. And that's kind of where this all stemmed from. This all stemmed from um, doing a weekly hip hop show on our local community radio station. Um, we did that for, well, you did that, you can speak on you, you did a long, long time. Yeah, I did it since I was like 21. So I think I did it like five years. Right. And mm -hmm. I was going to, I think I was going to try to do other stuff, but then this just sort of fell into place. Mm. And we fell in love. <laughs> and now we just don't. Yes. And. Yeah, look, I'm going to be honest, Eugene. I forgot the question. Uh, no, it was about how... Oh, wait, I forgot as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I thought you got me, dude. It's all good. Um, just, uh, just about... <clears throat> Shit, what was the question? Fuck. Um, just, <laughs> just, uh, hey, just how you guys got into uh, kind of from doing a radio hip-hop show to like kind of doing reaction videos and kind of posting them on YouTube, you know? Yeah. Um, simple as this. I had a GoPro mm. and I realized that the audio, we were doing a audio podcast and I realized, well, that's great, but it's not enough. You know, why don't we try and distribute this a little more intelligently? Mm -hmm. And so I started recording um, our, actually the first thing we did was an interview. I just recorded an interview we did with a local Australian hip hop artist called Ali Belmont, mm -hmm. who we would extremely recommend you check out, period. Gotcha. Shout out. Al. Um, and then from there, we... How, I mean, we just, why did we start reviewing music? Uh, well, I think the step, I remember when we were, we were in the in the studio and we were watching Big Quint in between when radio was on. Yeah. And we just thought, fuck it, Quint's doing this, why can't we do this? <laughs> All right. And this, I, don't think we, I don't think we initially meant to review track by track, but it just sort of happened. And then we thought, this is kind of like what we're doing and no one else is really doing this. Right. So you notice how this, our videos are quite lo much longer than, than traditionally because we naturally just talked like about these tracks yeah. and just and then when we were like sort of reviewing we'd be like oh we don't want to leave this out we don't want to cut this out we thought just the organicness of just like letting it flow from start to finish even with like certain flaws like it's just something you don't see too much in many channels like they'll cut out exactly what they want mm -hmm. you to hear was we're just giving you everything 100 right. percent. Right. Uh, yeah and then it just the momentum built up momentum built up and we just caught a, caught on fire and just um kind of wanted to keep continuing building on the momentum we had created for ourselves. So, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so can you talk about how, like, <clears throat> um, when it was, uh, when the momentum was building up and then you start getting, like, maybe, like, repeated fans coming back and, like, the same people watching your shit, like, I guess, what was, like, the interaction, like, with your audience on YouTube specifically? Or maybe just, like, ah, other forms of social media? Yeah. Well, I guess you could say it started when um, we released the, the Pink Eye reaction. Yeah, right, that's, that that's one has like 800k views or something like that, right? Yeah, shout out Papa Frankie. Like, <laughs> pretty much we put out that video because uh, a fan requested it. And we didn't have too many at that time. And that really started popping. And then from then we went on to XX Tentacion, which gave us some more fan base off that. Mm -hmm. So we still got to do a lot of stuff that we wanted to do. We did want to do that as well, but that's what initially stemmed a lot of our followers. Right. And but most of our fans are, are pretty good, like... Like they always, the real ones are always like sort of giving us sort of advice and like what they want to hear and stuff. And we we try and answer back to everything. And even with love the hate, we always try and answer back in like a positive way. And there's been a lot of times where people have actually gone from really negative to just like supporting us or just like being respectful of our hustles. So mm. and you said something. You said something really important there, and that's what um, like Eugene. You talk about the interaction, right? That's what you kind of uh, your question was framed around the interaction we had. There was one single person who asked us to review and react to Pink Guy, mm. um, Pink Season. One person. And this is at a time when we had probably about 1,000, 500 to 1,000 people following us. Um, I feel like so many people could easily ignore a comment like that, you know? Like, it's a single comment. 
you know, why pay it any attention? And I don't, I feel like we've always had the opposite approach to interact with as many people as possible, with connecting with as many people as possible to, as Kevin Kelly would say, um, develop a thousand true fans, which is extremely important to us. We don't need millions. It's a superficial number that seems nice. You see a lot of channels out there with huge audience bases, but very low engagement, very low uh, people who care. We just want people who legitimately care about the vision we have and what we're trying to create. Okay. And us and the music we, we kind of are putting out to the world or d- displaying. Um, and so we want to help do that by making sure we connect with you guys, making sure we say, yes, yes, Eugene, we'll give you an interview, no problem. You're not vice, you're not, you're not complex. Who are we to who are we to like judge you and say, oh, you're not big enough, man? I don't give a fuck if you got one person following or a, or a million. So I think that's the mentality that we will have since had since day one and will have since the till the end. Yeah, yeah. I feel it. it's funny because uh, I actually hit up the other uh, reaction channels and then most of them uh, didn't say shit. So hey, appreciate it. <laughs> but um, of course, man. No, if we got time, then we're gonna give that time to the people that are willing to you know do the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah appreciate it. So then, um, so then, like. You talk about how kind of you kind of share um, the interaction with the audience is such a big one, and I feel like that's a really thing. Is it, is it, that's a thing that uh, separates reaction videos from maybe like review videos a lot, like something like the Neo Drop or uh, like I don't know Dead and Hip Hop, where you know they take like a week or two and then they give their thoughts about it. But then for you guys, you guys are del- deliberately going in there without an idea of what you're going to expect and having to kind of articulate what you think on the spot. So then, what kind of is there any challenges that come with doing that? And what made you guys do that versus maybe just like giving a, a critique or a regular review? That's a good question. Yeah, it is a really good question. Um, basically, I think, fuck. So why do we do reactions over reviews and how does that change the way we review it? Well, it's much harder to develop cohesive, coherent, succinct thoughts on a piece of art when you're seeing it or hearing it for the first time, mm-hmm. right? All right? Guys like Dead in Hip Hop and Fantano, Take that time. They, they, they can have like multiple listens to form an opinion. They can do their research on the right. internet. Yeah. Whereas we pretty much put ourselves out there. Like people are going to look at us and be like, he fucked up saying this. He got that sample wrong. He got that wrong. We don't give a fuck about that. This is purely like a first listen, a first. And it's as much about the body language than, than what you're saying. So like you said, on a first listen, it's so hard to really complete your thoughts. And you're not hearing everything going on. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a complete sort of just putting yourself out there and just without any form of like, because so many reviewers would, would definitely say like, oh, I've known this or I know this and that, but they've just done their research. They're just trying to appear like they just know it all. But. I think there's something primal and really real about seeing someone's first reaction to a body of art. Mm. Um, you know, that I think that's valuable. I mean, for, the, for people and for us, like we just thought, why don't we just talk about the music? Like that's really what it was. Let's just talk about the music while we listen to it um and it just turned in from a reaction to kind of a half review that's why since day one you noticed uh we've always been putting first reaction review and we've noticed other review channels other reaction channels have gone from doing that as well right and now is it because of us maybe partly maybe (laughs) i'm gonna say maybe a little bit yeah because our reviews are longer than others so that's why i put a, a review as well so i think we've kind of tried to find that middle ground between the reaction and the review which is why um we think we separate ourselves from the majority mm-hmm. all right so then that means um <clears throat> specifically to like having a first uh first impression or reaction that means you guys have to stay away from listening to like singles that come out and like spoilers and stuff like that right Correct, and it's it's tough. It's yeah. very tough. Certain yeah. things, man. I like Andrew Reserve just released a new single and um, new music video, and I wanna I wanna make a video about that one. They released another one. Yeah, today in the last eight hours. Woo! Yeah. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, I just watched your uh, I just watched you guys as uh, Andrew Reserve a, a reaction that came out like was it today, yesterday, something like that. Yeah. So, and then the new video yeah, just so. came out too. But then, so um, I think what was really interesting. Do you guys? Were you guys, do you guys know about the whole like Sean C beef that was coming? Not not beef, but Sean C like controversy that happened a while ago. Was that the one with the the MF Doom one? Yeah, 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 that one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much he mentioned a lot of samples and they were just such like rare quality samples that no one should really ever know about. And then everyone was like really sort of like, how the hell would he know about this? Right. How the hell would he know about that? And then dude's that? like, I think, I think he's still in high school. So it's like, I'm pretty sure you weren't listening to like Boom Bap shit and all that stuff since, you know, exactly. Like so, right. So then, so yeah, give me your thoughts about that if you could. Well, I don't actually know what you guys are talking about. So you might want to educate me, Eugene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him the heads up. So basically, uh, from what I know is that uh, Sean C, he's like, uh, if you know him, he's like a kind of youngish reaction video dude. Yeah, yeah, we subscribe to him, man. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, I want to, yeah, yeah, I, I've watched some of his videos. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, what happened was he did like a, yeah, it was a mad villainy, I think, but he was, he, yeah, he did mad villainy. Right, he did mad villainy. And then uh, w when he started listening to songs, he was like, oh, this is my first time hearing it. Don't know nothing about this shit. So I listened to it and then he was like, oh, this sample's from this thing, oh, blah, 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 and all that stuff where it was like, things that like, you know, you know like, you know, freaking Madlib produced that shit, like he takes samples out of fucking everywhere. So everyone was like, how did he know this stuff? And then, and then uh, people accused him of kind of like uh, prepping for this reaction and then he denied it in another video, blah, blah, blah. And then, so that went away, but yeah, that's basically what happened. Okay, so basically I'm getting the impression that Sean C kind of faked a reaction and like, and instead it was more like a review. Like he came in with much more knowledge of the album than he kind of uh, put across. Is right, but, of, he, but he yeah. played it like a reaction. Like he was like, oh wow, this is from this sample. Wow, that's dope, but. Right, yeah, so yeah. he could appear more knowledgeable and, and exactly, uh, yeah. kind of credible. Yeah. And there was, a Reddit, there was a Reddit post as well, which covered it. And it covered like all the samples that he noticed. And some of them were from like, years and years ago some of them were from like bands that had like a few thousand sort of views and sort of stuff so like he was just picking up things that you just just even like the biggest music heads just wouldn't pick up right right right. look and she said sean sees in high school as well right i i, I think so high school or i think it's like 18 yeah all right cool well that makes sense why people would kind of you know question him hey yeah that makes sense you but think with that many followers you wouldn't need to do that because i can understand people are uh, like prepping for it if they want to like build more of a fan base and want people to think they're like that but when you've got when he's got a pretty big following already i why think that's why it's pressure i feel like you become pressured i mean some people would become pressured oh well, now i've got to perform for the people now i've got to you know put on a show i've got to continue to make sure i'm credible and at the end of the day like i don't know if this is true so i can't speak on um this specific topic but whenever you try to deceive people uh, or lie to them or manipulate the truth um regardless of what genre you're in or niche you're in like we're in uh people don't take lightly to that and um you know if we were to come in come in there and i don't know how could we do that what's our version of that i don't even know i don't know i feel like no matter how big we got or whatever like i just couldn't i couldn't be fake like i don't i don't care about if i get things wrong when people tell me like oh you got this wrong or you're an idiot blah blah like i don't like nothing really phases me like i'm happy to be who i am and if i get something wrong i get something wrong if i get something right i get it right Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, shout out to Sean C, man. Like, oh, yeah, his uh, I good. legitimately would like to collaborate with him and, and talk with him, music and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, I got nothing against him. Oh, yeah, same. Even if, like, that's true, what he did, like, he's still, a lot of his other stuff's, like, really good and he's pretty well thought out mm. patterns and good humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, no, I don't know. The, <clears throat> that whole thing happened kind of just, uh, Maybe I don't know, I've been watching, like, actually, my first uh, reaction video that I ever watched was a uh, Big Quint's, like, Good Kid, Mad City, like, way back when. And uh, like, you oh. shout out, Quint. Right, and I was like, oh, shit, this dude's dancing, and he's, like, he likes the shit that I like, and, like, I fucking dig that. <laughs> right, but then, uh, I, what I've been noticing with a lot of reaction channels, especially the ones that, like, have been there for a while, is that, like, they, they kind of start up, and then people love their personality, their kind of, their thoughts, and after a while, um... It either gets stale or they try to like kind of change shit up in, in a way that kind of neg gets a negative reaction. Like I feel like Bitcoin recently has been hitting that plateau where, you know, people expect him to do his thing and like have his like, the, they expect those like things that he does and then he just does those things and I don't know. So like you guys are- Can I speak like, on that? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Look, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like Big Quint should be one of the most relevant music reviewers on this planet. He should be on toe-to-toe -to -toe with Needle Drop, if not bigger. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I agree. Like, based on personality and character. Um, and I have noticed he's been getting stagnant. Right. I Even I'm feeling it. When I'm watching his latest videos, I'm like, I'm not as into this as I used to be. Like, I don't know. Like, there's a couple things that I feel like Quint could push him to the stratosphere if he just did these things. It doesn't, doesn't seem like he really cares about, like, 
uh, the little things like mm. titles. He doesn't put the artist in the title. That's huge if you want to get more natural organic views. Mm. He doesn't create custom thumbnails. That takes 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. That can help dramatically with people clicking your videos. All right, let's be on that. I don't know if he's probably tagging his videos. All right, maybe he's not tagging. But just consistency. I know it's hard and he works near, he has a white, uh, partner and stuff like that. But like, I feel like Bitcoin, if, if he, if he w- was a little more consistent, a little more focused, he could really make this a full-time job and become one of the most significant personalities in this music game. You know, I don't know, man. But I think I know why that is. Please. Because I think it's not really what he wants to do. Like, is he, he makes his own music. I'm pretty sure that's what he really wants to do. Yeah. So Maybe. I'm thinking like, and he, he works, he still works like everyone like four or five days a week. Yeah. He still plays sport. He still goes out. Like, yeah. I feel like he's just a very busy guy. So when, even though he has like the pressure of putting out all these videos and needing to have like upper content and just like, I feel like at the end of the day, like he does it more for enjoyment than as a than as a job. Because I feel yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. his music and everything else he does comes before that. I I think you're right. So, I think you're right. But I think, yeah. but I think that if he did want to take that next approach, and if he w- was more passionate, more into it, then I think that he would do what you did and push because he could and he could have. I think he's sort of missed that train a bit now. Yeah. Go ahead, Eugene. What do you think on this? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's like I, I guess um, from all the stuff that's coming up, like the main. Uh, juxtaposition that sees happening where it's like reaction videos the why like even just like reaction videos about like anything that's happening on YouTube just um, the the main thing that attracts people is because of it's so candid and so real but then for reaction videos to be like a viable medium you have to plan it out and you have to kind of construct and you know if, before thinking about how you do it which is kind of you know, and I feel like that's like kind of the thing Bitcoin ran to, where it was like he got to a point of uh, fame where he knows what people expect of him, but he didn't, but he didn't want to lose the candidness and like lose the the really like free flowing approach that he does that shit. So then, in the end, he just kind of hit like a dead end. Hmm. Yeah, and then so my question is to you guys: Is that how if um you know like kind of when you guys are keep rising up and keep getting more followers and getting more popular, how do you guys deal with that like tension between being candid and then also like, you know, planning out like what you're going to do? Hmm. Well, we eventually want to start doing a lot more than just reaction reviews. So okay. we're hoping that over time that adds more flavor and more sort of to our channel. So people will be like, oh, they don't just do this. Mm. But there is that, there is that slight fear of realizing like, that you will become a bit stale, you will sort of have similarities in a lot of your videos. So it is, it is a lot to think about. Honestly, you say pre-planned. Um, we try not, you say but the balance between candid and pre-planned. The only planning we're doing is putting, for me anyway, is putting music on my phone, mm-hmm. um, making sure I'm ready, and maybe doing a little bit of research on the artist or the background of the roll-up to the album. Right. Um, really, this shit for us is not supposed to be planned you know we, we i don't want to preempt my reaction or what how i'm going to respond the reason one of the reasons why pink season was so popular um is because it was a visceral authentic reaction to something that i had never experienced or known about right mm-hmm. You're right uh, most people wouldn't react like that because they know the context i didn't now i do so we'll never get a video like that again yeah um, so there's something special about that formula, but uh, it's kind of, you, you, you kind of worry some, I don't know, like you do this again and again and again, and I don't know if you're sitting, like when we're reviewing music and we're reacting to it and listening to it, I don't know if you ever feel it. Like sometimes you feel like, oh, it's just in the back of your mind. Every now and again, it comes up. Oh, there's a camera. Should I be doing something? Mm. I don't want to perform. Yeah, it does. It gets to the point of like, oh, like I've been sitting quiet for these last three, four tracks getting into it. I really feel like I should be getting up and moving a bit to give people some entertainment. But then you're just like, but that's me forcing entertainment. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So and it, exactly. And every time I get that thought, I push it away because it should always be organic. And if, it's, if it's a whole video, we are not reacting barely. As long as you're showing it on your body language, be it just like just looking at the camera in a certain way or just like doing, doing a certain thing and then just expressing your thoughts afterwards. Even if it's not like huge amounts of movement. Like as long as you're expressing your opinions in the right form and just getting that across, and that's what that's the whole point of the video. Mm. And that's yeah. uh, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. All I was gonna say is that I feel like maybe a guy like Quint has been trapped into that. Like, I never want to feel like I'm uh, performing for the camera, performing for the audience. This this has to be just us. And I feel like I wonder, 
I wonder if Quint is now in the back of his mind, like, fuck, man, i got to dance with these motherfuckers now. <laughs> yeah, Why can't, I just want to sit here for this video. I just want to chill. But maybe sometimes he doesn't feel like, you know, because his whole character and his whole kind of video essence is based around that entertainment. So I wonder how he, he interacts with that too. Mm, yeah, and I guess uh, I guess making it making it very clear that it's a reaction interview, kind of a uh, at least somewhat uh, in some ways sidesteps our problem, where it's like the review part's still there, even though if the reaction you the audiences want isn't exactly there. But so uh, that kind of leads into my next question, where it's like, have you guys ever had to review an album that you legitimately just thought was just like very meh? And then like <laughs> yeah, we've done a few of those. <laughs> right, uh, gorillas, humans, uh -huh. gorillas, humans. Uh, Meek Mill's last album. Mm. Uh, Meek Mill's album before that. <laughs> <laughs> Meek Mill's career in general. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, all right, all right. Not here. Personal preference. Personal preference. But uh, honestly, yeah. like probably one in five videos we do, uh -huh. maybe because 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 we do try and review like we review stuff that we want to do. But then the stuff that we both want to do, so I might like something I do, you might like something you do. But the, and even stuff, some of the songs, the fans' requests will be like, mm, this, this is okay. Uh, I just think if we pumped out more videos, if we were able to get to the studio more and record, there would be a lot more of those videos. Mm. But because the priorities are the bigger artists, the artists that we may like a bit more, then that doesn't happen as often. But it mm. will in the future when we get more consistent. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, do you feel like you, there's like a kind of pressure to like, be more extreme in your reactions, just, you know, like more negative or positive when there's a, when album honestly just doesn't really strike anything to you? I feel it, but I never give into it. Gotcha. <laughs> what do you mean? The pressure. Is it like the pressure to like, feel like you should be, is it what we said, like, is it reacting more or like trying to yeah, be yeah. a bit well, more inciting? Yeah, as in yeah. like, you know how people give like, uh, like Fantano shit for uh, giving Kendrick a bad review and they're like, oh, like giving hey. Kanye a bad review. Oh, like he's just like trying to like, you know, like cause controversy, get some, uh, get some name and shit like that. Um, mm. Right, right. So it's like as reviewers, when, if you're like, you know, when you listen to a bad album that's kind of like mediocre, you don't really react. You're kind of just like, uh, this is whatever, you get boy turned off. But then if you have to react to it. And then fans are expecting, the fans want to be entertained, right? So then, yeah. Man, oh, you go, you go. Well, man, we got to be 100% 100, you know? Like, uh, sometimes you feel like a big artist comes on and, you you know, you, you got to, oh, shit, we're high expectations, you know? Let, let's go. Like, uh, they're expecting some dope shit. But, you know, we have to be honest with uh, ourselves and the artist and, and the viewers and, you know, make sure we let them all know, like, if this is trash, it's fucking trash. Yeah, like we just... Like we, you did not like love first time listening to it. This man it. got raped in the comments oh, section. Oh man, I got destroyed. Yeah. I still don't like it this day. Like I don't even... I, I honestly am not a big fan of Damn by Kendrick Lamar. I can still say that now. It's not going in my top 10 of the albums. Hell, it's not going in my top 20. Woo! It's okay, okay. I all right, admit, all right, it's, that's cool, whatever. <laughs> it's a great... No, I can admit it's a great album. It's probably his best album written-wise because uh, story-wise, the way they write it, it's amazing. But musically... It just doesn't resonate with me. That's why I don't like it. But I can I can appreciate it for being a great album. Mm -hmm. And so it's that confidence to do that that I think he's very good at, even better better than me, to be unbashfully himself or and able to critique music. Um, that answers that question. Yeah. And also, I was going to say, like, also the new Death Grips album we reviewed, like, everyone's telling us to review the next Death Grips one. So we're so there's all the pressure being like, oh, they love the first album so much. Maybe they like the second one. We didn't really like the next album we did, and we we showed that a hundred percent. Like yeah. we were just, there were times we were so bored that we were just like being crazy. We were going crazy, or <laughs> and I was just I was shitting on a certain few things. And even with Mix last album, I was a giving him example. I was I was giving him a lot of L's. Like I was shitting the fuck on him. So mm. like, there's never any pressure on me to to feel like not, to not say anything bad. And even even people because we review a few Australians as well. There'll be things that we'll be like we'll, we'll know the artist. So that there'll be a point where we're like. Like, remember, you like, are we not being harsh enough on this project? Yeah. Like, are we not critiquing it enough? Like, are we within the stages where, like, you just got to really, like, I just feel like we were pretty real. Like, we never try and take sides or be like, oh, we can't shit on this too much. Like, we're, right, like, right, right. yeah. Hmm. And so, uh, I feel like, I, I, at least just, yeah, my personal opinion is that, like, the reason why different reaction channels uh, have their appeal and the, their own individual fan bases because you know they all give off a certain 
personality. Like, like imagine like all of them in a room and they all are a different type of dude that likes different types of music and reacts in a certain way and then you kind of get that, right? So then for you, for you guys, for you two, what do you guys think uh, your pers uh, the personas that you have that the fans are into? That makes sense. For me, I think it's my goofiness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a goofy man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go ahead. What oh, else? What else is there? What, what, do you, what do you think? Of, what do you think? I you think, appeal to the people, or us? I think my cringiness as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit. Of, I'm a bit of a bit cheesy too. So my cheesiness, my cringiness. I've never met someone who's so confident to dance so terribly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, it, man. But hey, it doesn't. I'm, even, I know I'm whack. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing that all those motherfucking keyboard warriors don't know. Like, you can laugh at our dance moves, <laughs> but I put the camera on, and you fucking you 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 will run away. You won't you won't bust a move. Right. You won't bust. Um. <laughs> uh. But to answer your question, I just think it's, you know, we we offer something like we're Australian for one. You know, like I don't know any other review channels that. Um, or reaction channels that are outside of America. Yeah, America's got a lot going on. Uh, no, we, yeah. we come from ra the radio, so we, we come from being able to discuss this music and critique it in, in a synced kind of professional manner, mm -hmm. albeit our swearing and, and unprofessionalness <laughs> can, can be large. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the duo, I think that's something interesting. I think when you have people to bounce ideas off, mm -hmm. I think... This synergy, because we're not two random people off the street, we actually developed a relationship first through radio, and then we kind of um, built into this. We have a natural chemistry, and I think that's extremely important when you have a group of people like Dead and Hip Hop. You feel the chemistry. Oh, they were homies from the start, and then they're all and all their taste in hip hop are also different because, like, um, like say, FIFO is into the more the bangers, and like Beezy, which is into more the underground, and you got um, Ken, who's into the more old school, and then. C Town, who's into like more experimental life, they've all got so different views, but they but they'll but they'll take turns like bringing their own content and all getting into it. Like, right. so that's why I think that that channel works really well. And I think we're, we're similar, but obviously we're two people, not four people. Like, we're we're very different in terms of people. We've got different tastes in hip hop, but we still come together and agree on things and then disagree with things. So that definitely works in our favor. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So the whole so the chemistry part is a big thing, and being a duo. Hundred, hundred. Mm -hmm. um, a thousand percent like that, that that'll transcend what we do with just reviews like that that trend like you know beyond the music reviews like if we ever do a jingle beats gaming if we if we do this uh this thing where we want to drive around listen to music and talk life like that's another little segment we want to create like that those things become so much more natural and easier because we're just good friends you know mm. yeah i feel um so what do you guys think just in just kind of a comment on the culture as a whole why is it that hip-hop why is it that hip-hop has such a large reaction video culture and other genres don't because it's the most popular genre in america at the moment oh, I'd, I'd argue it's the youth the world yeah yeah mm -hmm. but i think you don't agree i don't know i'm not sure what the world i don't know if that's been proved because it's just because america america in terms of media yeah. is kind of what the world sees yeah. the most of yeah Mm -hmm. And because it's the, the it's but yeah it's been proven the younger generation is massively influenced by hip hop because more of the younger generation is doing the review channels and the reactions like that's kind of where hip hop is so popular and stemming from as well yeah I think because it impacts the the youth a younger demographic mm. and two it's become one of the most it's uh, become a huge part of culture in the Western world like right. uh, I hear again and again like how it's like. The one of the biggest forces in culture is music and hip hop in the 21st century, and I believe that, and I feel that, and I think if it wasn't hip hop, it'd just be another genre. I just think if punk and rock were hip, what hip hop is now, then you'd probably see a bunch of reaction view channels on punk and rock. I, I, that's just what I what I think, because um, I just think that's where hip hop's place is in the in the world right now. I think you'll see ebbs and flows over the next 50 years, and it won't always be like this. Mm, okay, gotcha. Hmm. What do you think? Uh, uh, thinking about it, actually, my theory about all this um, is kind of like because I cause, all right because uh, right, I'm right, I'm in college right now and then um, 
But the, the way you hear our party is mostly is the EDM or hip hop, right? That's what you know American use mostly here nowadays. But um, <clears throat> but then but then the I don't know why, why I feel like hip hop might have a bigger presence for reaction videos. Kind of like what when, when I think about EDM and like the people that make EDM, the artists, the DJs. There's very little face and personality that comes with the music. It's more just like the mute. It's like the immediate, instantaneous like sound of it and shit. But then for hip hop, there is like, I, you know, when I listen to an XXS Tentacion song, I, I have him in my mind when I'm thinking when I'm listening to the song. It's not just you know the lyrics and the beat, whatever. And then so I don't know. Maybe the reason why reaction videos work so well for hip hop is that you know it's also a personality there. So it's kind of like that's what appeals. For the genre, so they also for reaction videos. I'm just digesting that. Yeah, so am I. Okay, I've digested that. <laughs> Alright, cool. No, because like you have a different perspective, Eugene. You live what? What city you come from? What city you live in? Uh, I'm right in Santa Barbara, if you know it. Santa Barbara. Okay, yeah. so you, you come from a different perspective, like. You, you're living in that culture. Right, you, yeah. You day in day out. You you guys wake up, go to sleep. You get you're the first ones who get it. Like when music drops, when shit happens, you guys know like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's interesting to hear a local's perspective. Yeah. But thanks for sharing that. No problem. And actually, um, kind of relating to that. So, um, what is like the like so, uh, I'm from uh, I'm originally from uh, Taiwan, right? So then, like when I go back to visit my relatives and shit, um, it's always interesting to hear how American music has like disseminated towards you know audiences in Asia. Where like you know I'll hear like a Lady Gaga song on the radio four years after she got big, and that's when oh like, yes right. So then, how's it like? How how's it go through the channels and like hit Australia for you guys? Go ahead, man. I feel like Australia is pretty good, but there are definitely are times where we're probably about a year behind, but not much more than that. Mm. I feel like Australia is pretty, pretty, pretty on cue with America. We're definitely behind, but but if you talk about radio, that's no question. They are dramatically behind. Oh, oh yeah. mainstream commercial radio. Radio is behind for sure. Like I'm hearing songs that were popular ten years ago on repeat. Today. I do like how you mentioned Taiwan though, because I remember going to like say Thailand and Macau and that sort of stuff, and they, a lot of the music they play is five to ten years behind of the popular yeah. music that was playing in America at that time. So right, 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 right. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting how that, that they're constantly playing that music, but it's just from such a long time ago. But it's just what's popular there at the moment. So. Yeah. No, I have a fourteen-year-old cousin. Her favorite artist right now is Coldplay. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Like shit. When I like that was like when I was fourteen, I was his favorite artist. Man, fuck. But uh. Yeah, I mean, and it's also like weird because like you, you guys get it, like everyone in the world gets music instantaneously through the internet, but then like through your mainstream media channels, it comes so much later. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if if you're from a so a lower social economic status, then yeah, maybe your your favorite band will be Coldplay, or you just really like Coldplay. Too. <laughs> that yeah, could yeah. Be either Coldplay. one, but like that affects what you're exposed to as well. Mm -hmm. So, and um, kind of relating to just uh, you guys' uh, I read your mission statement that you guys post on YouTube videos and your, uh, your channel about kind of creating a, creating a hip, creating a hip hop culture in Australia that you don't think is as prominent as it could be. Can, 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 can you guys just talk about that? Man, I wrote that. Do you remember what that, that is? Is that an intro on Jungle Beats about how? That, that's, um, i show you right now. Hold up, get it it's up. In the, it's in the YouTube description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have it on all our videos, don't we? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Do you, do you remember it? Um, it's about how we're trying to push more hip-hop out of it because it's just not big in Australia as much. Mm. I feel like Australia... No, no, Australia, hip-hop is big, but people just don't talk about it much because the media isn't covering it as much as people would. Here we go. Jungle Beats aspires to Australia's plug to the best, most prolific and unique hip-hop artists in the world. Uh, we host one of Australia's few and best hip-hop podcast shows. It's purely about creatively sharing our love for music and hip-hop with energy, positivity, and passion. Started this in 2015 with a weekly one-hour hip-hop. Blah, 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 blah. What am I supposed to be reading? To us, Australia doesn't there have a go. strong hip-hop identity within That's culture. Good. Who do you think of when you think of hip-hop in Australia? Most think of 99 people outside of this country. Maybe yeah. we can change that in some small way and push this forward. Um, and yeah, so that's what I wrote on one of our f first videos, like last year or the year before. And it just sort of resonated with everything, so. 
just keep it there. Because I wrote that. How do you interact with that? Because that's that's my word. But like, how do you feel? Uh, I mean, is so, it like? Yeah. Sorry. No, I, sorry. Because you can't see us. I was um, looking at Alexander. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, sorry. I I was that. As in, like, um, as in, when people ask, "Oh, who's a good artist from Australia?" and people say someone who's not from Australia, is that what you're saying? I'm just the general vision, the mission statement vision that I wrote down. Like, like well, I, I, the way I got out of it, kind of like what I was saying before about how people. When you think about hip hop in Australia, if you're not from Australia, then you don't really know anyone, mm. and you just sort of think, "Oh, people." That's why a lot of a lot of people that come to Australia to perform don't who have never been to Australia before. And I've, I've like interviewed and heard a lot of artists, like, and they always tell me that just like I don't expect the reaction that I get. So many people when they come to Australia from America, from Europe, are just like, I honestly expected it to be like an average show with average reaction every single time. Booked out crowds. Crazy reaction. Yeah, man. That's why people love coming to Australia so much. I think it's not so much because they probably get the same reaction back home, but the fact that they come here not expecting it and then get such a huge warm welcome. I remember when Loyal Carter came here. He's from he's from Ireland. He came here. I don't think he'd been here before, and he he performed uh, the place in Richmond and packed out venue. The crowd gave him super love, and he was just absolutely just. It was mind blowing. He was just absolutely enjoying himself and just nearly broke down. Like <laughs> it's crazy, man. Just and I think. I think that's like definitely a part of it because people just don't know that hip hop is big in Australia and the younger generation, even the older generation, but the media just doesn't portray it because mm-hmm. the media is still focusing on sort of indie and pop and rock and things that are just, that are still there, but they're just, you know, hip hop's just building up higher than these things, but it's just not there yet. And hip hop is the most powerful cultural force in the Western world slash America. It is not here. Mm-hmm. It is not here. It should be. I mean, it, sorry, who says it should be? It can be. It has the potential to be. And we think it can, can provide so much positivity, so much uh, amazing art. Like, this is art, right? So it can provide so much uh, uh, excellence. Um, and it's not right now because you turn on the radio and the mainstream ain't, ain't fucking with that. Mm. It's not on. And we want to help push that forward in some small yeah. way. Like we, were, I, well, I eventually want to get to a spot where, like, when... We have, we have a power and control over what's what is said and what's sort of you know portrayed in the media in terms of hip hop. So and that, that's through that like what dream a dream vision would be to have a solely dedicated radio station to just hip hop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we could even control that and also be at say social media websites where constant uploads and things where people can just connect and like like be a way that. You know, hip hop's constantly relevant in Australia. Like the plug. That's what I say. Australia's plug to the best hip hop in the world, hip hop and music in the world. Mm-hmm. We don't have a plug. Who's the motherfucking plug? Tell me. <laughs> who is in the 23, 4 million people who live here? Who are we going to? Like, we're going to everyone outside of this country. We're going to, we're going to big um, review channels like Needle Jog. We're going to like people like uh, media companies like Vice, yeah. Complex, and all those guys who are great. But there's no one in this house, in this country, who's really. Are big enough to have an influence. Yeah. Maybe we can. Maybe we can't. But yeah. we're gonna try. I feel. I feel. All right. All right. Uh, and I kind of just end things off. Uh, kind of. What, what is your future plans in the recent future to uh, grow, expand, and all that jazz? We got a lot of dreams. Yeah, bro. We do. Just like we said with the radio. But that's very, very long term. If it's possible. Do you have anything on top of your head you want to speak on? Yes, I guess I was mentioned what we want to do. Yeah, eventually I, we, I do want to like get our own radio says so kind of like what Tyler did with his own golf golf radio. Like, mm-hmm. he can play whatever he wants in there. We definitely do something like that. I eventually want to like have a way when because a lot of artists will come to Australia and the people like hip hop artists, the ones that manage them, don't necessarily understand the culture and the life they live, so they don't get treated the way that they be normally expect to be treated back home. So a lot of hip hop artists that come to Australia may enjoy the experience like concert wise but I don't experience the way that things are handled so it'd be nice to get in control of that and like be it us or other people that we know that like when artists come to Australia they get handled by people that they know will look after them and treat them good and you know make sure they have a really good time as well as performing mm-hmm. and and also I'm a big gamer so I eventually want to get a good gaming channel going so does that so too. yeah we've, we've, <laughs> we've uh, talked about Jungle Bees gaming I used to play video games when I was younger as a kid um I used to actually have a gaming channel, and it's still up there. Um, <laughs> no one probably knows, he knows, yeah. but uh, sneakily, I'm just going to put that out there, um, see if anybody can find it. <laughs> anyway, so that that would be cool to do. 
um, that's the only way I'm, you're going to get me to play video games. So we're recording it and putting it out videos and, mm. you know, pushing our brand. Mm. That's the only way you will get me. But might as well document what you're doing. Mm. And two, uh, we want to launch a new segment um, where we just drive and talk about music. Kind of like what Apple did with Carpool Karaoke, mm-hmm. except, uh, you know, we don't have access to celebrities. So we're just going to do it ourselves and just... Yeah. Drive, man. Just uh, drive, play music, and talk. Yeah, man. I'm a bit more laid back, easy to edit. Um, mm. No, no real pressure to do anything uh, other than just enjoy our time. Yeah. And beyond that, you know, we want to try and be affiliate. We want to try and get affiliated with um, uh, other radio stations. Like when the lease runs up in our warehouse, you know, we know what we want to do next after that. Um, and basically, being affiliated with uh, another. How do I say? Radio station um, who was willing to have us in their studio and maybe figure out some type of partnership would be great. Yeah. A real professional studio, but we don't have to build it all ourselves. Um, that we've learned that in this last six months. Oh yeah, we're learning things the hard way, but it's all learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, could you guys just, uh, just to clarify, uh, and I, I won't publish it if you don't have, to, if you don't want me to. But like uh, the whole like you guys getting like kicked off the that old radio show or something. Like what actually happened? What do you want to know? Yeah. Um, yeah so d- for those d- who don't know, happen, yeah. Okay. So there's a bunch of multiple things. So if you want the full succinct story, just type in, just go on our channel. How yeah, Jungle Beats yeah, got kicked video off. About that, right? Correct, there is. But right. if you want a little short explanation, short explanation. Do you want to start off with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So some of the things were one was for me, for example, like I. I was passed because the community radio was that we're a part of was mm. uh, only mostly for people of a certain age because mm. it's more about helping the younger. And I was too old, so I wasn't actually allowed to be there. So that was one thing that was wrong. Okay. Uh, another thing was the professionalism of the way that they took it. Uh, they, I, I honestly think they took it in a way that was a bit harsh and a bit exaggerated. Exaggerated, yeah. definitely. So, and there were definitely things that we did that we like. Like some of our content and some of the things that we went away about things was definitely not the smartest to go about it. But, but the first thing was simply we were broadcasting in the live studio. Um, so this means it was going out live to the people. This was actually the first time we did this was the Pink Season video mm. um, without explicit permission or we hadn't organized to book it. Um, and so that was – actually, no, it wasn't Pink Season. It was Migos Culture. So if you want to see us getting kicked out of the studio live, just go watch the Migos Culture mm. review. Um, and during that, security guards knocked on the door, uh, told us we had to leave. Um, we didn't really understand what was going on because we were both under the impression, which was actually incorrect, that we were allowed to be in the studio when people weren't in there. Mm. We were wrong. And even if it was incorrect, like, wouldn't you rather have us on air having genuine content than Nothing five right. songs looping right. yeah, over yeah. the whole night? So. And so after that, I believe... We were suspended um, for a period of time, um, and we. This was after our pink season was blowing up, and we felt the pressure to continue to create, and we didn't want to disappoint the people we were um, servicing now and, and ourselves. And you know, so we went back in the studio without their permission, and not the live studio, just another one, mm. late at night uh, when it was kind of empty, and. They found out, not there while we were there, but actually like a week later, I got a phone call. And um, so at that point, we were permanently suspended until we went to a meeting to talk with them. He wasn't allowed at the meeting. Um, They just wanted to meet with me because I was the only member, which was a bit strange, but okay. Um, And then from that point, explained the situation. They were not not at all uh, impressed with our contents, Mm. the way we went about things, I guess the swearing and the... The way we go about things, uh, they didn't appreciate. Um, you know, if you, some of you have seen, I might have thrown a chair here and there <laughs> when I get hyped. All right. You get, yeah. you get emotional, man. Did, did I break anything? No. Was it disrespectful to them? Maybe. All right. <laughs> fine. I won't throw chairs anymore. Um, but you always throw just chairs. those general behaviors, they didn't appreciate from that point after a long, serious discussion on something that we thought is not as serious as it should be or as it, as it actually is, like... Guys, it's just community radio. It's just a small incident. But okay, You've got to respect that. We get bands. Well, they decide. They have a big meeting. We weren't there. I wasn't there. I couldn't make it. 
they have a meeting, they decide to ban me permanently. And so we move on from there. And so that's a quick four minute, five minute explanation of how Jungle Beats got kicked off radio. Um, and hopefully, yeah. Hopefully that, that's, get a rebound and get, um, get on the back again. Was that clear? Like, is there any questions you have? Oh, no, no, that, that was clear. That was clear. Thank you very much for that. Mm. But also to talk about what we talked about before with, um, so with everything we talked about what you want to be doing within Jungle Beats, so it's more like the more, the more time, like time is a big thing for us. So I feel like the more profit that we get from doing this, which goes into it, then the more sort of time and money we'll have to really get more content as well. So like we're, we're all about the sort of building our fan base, building a loyal fan base, getting to a stage where hopefully you can fund the things we want to do because yeah, money and time are the big things at the moment. Mm. Yeah. Well said. All right, dope. Thank you. I'm just sitting on the hill watching J engines spill into the vortex in my head. Everybody manipulated that Donnie Darko flow. Just a different context. Real life more complex.